Another all-English final in a UEFA competition, this time, the Europa League. Hey there, I'm Canadrian, and this is Rabona TV's preview of Arsenal versus Chelsea, a London derby, in the Europa League final. It's crazy, man. Of the four finalists in the UEFA competitions, three of them are from London, which is wild. It's definitely a down year for the major powers from other countries in Europe, but I think just saying that sort of discounts how strong the English Cubs are this season. With the introductions of both Jurgen Klopp and Pep Guardiola, the rest of the English teams were forced to improve as well in order to keep up with City and Liverpool, and I think that ambition has made for a higher standard across the board in England. But football is cyclical, and if I may quote Daenerys Targaryen, quote, please don't tell your sisters about your true identity. I'm kidding. But honestly, to adapt her wheel quote, where she talks about the power struggle in Westeros between the great houses, you can adapt that to football as well. English clubs, Spanish clubs, Italian, French, German, they're all just spokes on a wheel. This one's on top, then that one's on top, and on and on it spins, crushing those on the ground. Spain was on top before for many seasons. England is on top now. We'll see if they can sustain it or if another will take their turn up there as well. One of the reasons one of our finalists has made it there is because their manager, Unai Emery, knows a thing or two about the wheel in European football. And I'm dropping this metaphor right now, by the way. <laughs> as Unai Emery has won three Europa League titles in a row with Sevilla before taking off to PSG. One of those titles I don't care to speak about as a Benfica fan, but he's also proven this season that he still got it in this competition. Arsenal dominated their group, had a scare against Rennes, but made it out fine in the end. Unintentional rhyme, I promise. And many thought that they would meet their doom when they were drawn against Napoli, but quite the contrary, as Rennes provided more of a scare than the second best team in Italy managed to. See what I say about all these other teams having a down year? Arsenal, a team who finished 5th in their own country, defeated Napoli 3-0 on aggregate, including a 1-0 win at the San Paolo, despite Arsenal's away form being a massive, massive question mark at that point in the season. And well, in their season in general, you could say. Then, to illustrate even further how much of a down year it is for clubs from other countries, Arsenal absolutely smashed Valencia 7-3 on aggregate, with Lacazette scoring 3 and Aubameyang scoring 4. A Valencia side that later went on to win the Copa del Rey against Barcelona. These English teams aren't playing around this season. Their opponents, Chelsea, well, they've had a bit of a different path to the finals. While their domestic form was up and down at times this season, they still managed to finish in third place, despite the tumultuous relationship between Maurizio Sarri and, uh, well, seemingly everyone at the club, as well as the fans. His refusal to rotate his squad, a habit he brought with him, from Italy, drew the ire of some sects of Chelsea fans domestically, but in Europe, chances would be given to the likes of Callum Hudson-Odoi, Ruben Loftus-Cheek, Emerson, etc., and to great effect, as Chelsea scored a ton of goals in the Europa League, Giroud being the main scorer, and have rocked their way to the final relatively easily. Part of that is due to the fact that they haven't played very good teams, something I highlighted in my semi-finals preview video. So I'm going to throw it to reporter Adrian Luiz from Rabona TV. Take it away, Adrian. If you go by UEFA coefficients, the highest ranked league they've come across is the Ukrainian Premier League, which is ranked ninth in Europe, in which they took on Dynamo Kiev. Other than that, Peok from Greece, the 14th ranked league, Batze Borisov from Belarus, 21st, Vidi FC from Hungary, the 33rd ranked league, Malmo from Sweden, 22, and finally Slavia Prague from the Czech Republic, 13. Thank you, Adrian. Great work, as always. Now, Chelsea did make it past Eintracht Frankfurt. I thought Frankfurt was going to pull it off, but it took a shootout for Chelsea to do so. And this is a Frankfurt team that was dead on their feet, tired, and going through probably the worst patch of form in their entire season. I mean, they were doing incredibly well from about January 19th until April 11th when they lost to Benfica 4-2. And from then on, despite navigating past Benfica with a little help from the linesmen, they were cursed not winning another match for the rest of the season and losing their final four consecutively. So with Chelsea not facing tough competition in this competition and then struggling with a very, very weak Frankfurt squad, it doesn't inspire a ton of confidence in them. But then again, if this match does indeed count as an away game, which I think it does, then Arsenal has some reason to worry as well, despite them winning their last two away matches in the Europa League against Copa del Rey champs, Valencia, and the perennially second best team in Italy, Napoli. As for potential player personnel that could miss out, Arsenal certainly has the cleaner bill of health. Their biggest loss is, of course, 
the outgoing Aaron Ramsey, and behind him, Henrik Mkhitaryan, and the most useless signing of their season, Denis Suarez. For Chelsea, however, they'll be missing two of their best players from their Europa League run in Callum Hudson-Odoi and Ruben Loftus-Cheek, both out with Achilles injuries, the latter of which infuriatingly injured himself in a post-Premier League friendly in the United States. That has got to be one of the most infuriating injuries for the Chelsea fans. Why on earth are you playing friendlies after a long, grueling Premier League season when you still have a European final to contend for? It's nonsensical. On top of that, Antonio Rudiger is out, so Christensen will be partnering David Luiz. Not exactly a huge loss there, though Christensen has had a hard time replicating his form from, I think it was last season. And perhaps a little more damning is the potential of N'Golo Kante not winning his own fitness race for the final with a knee injury, so that means that the footballing equivalent of a giant meh, Mateo Kovacic will likely fill in. Or maybe Barkley. We'll see. By the way, I feel bad saying that about Kovacic, but my man doesn't do enough for me. He doesn't affect matches nearly enough, given the skill that you can clearly see he has. Now, this isn't an injury necessarily, but I'm curious as to whether or not Emery will play Peter Cech. Recently, there have been rumors and some controversy surrounding him among Arsenal fans, as it has come out that he is likely going to be accepting some sort of backroom role at Chelsea once this season has concluded. I think there was a discussion of him taking on some sort of technical director role, something along those lines. Cech, of course, said that he will be only thinking about the next step in his career after the final, but given that he has featured in almost every Europa League match for Arsenal, there's an interesting conundrum there. Certainly, he's a great example of what a football professional should be, and I'm not saying he would throw the match or something like that. I don't think that at all. But with his past with Chelsea and potentially his future being at Chelsea, some Arsenal fans have called for Leno to get the start ahead of Cech. Tough situation for Emery to deal with. I mean, do you allow Czech to play in the final, well, the final match of his career and risk him perhaps having a slight distraction in his mind? Or do you ignore the sentimentality of it and go with Leno and deny Czech of that last opportunity? At this point, it looks like Czech will be playing. That's what people are forecasting, at least. Something that causes me a bit of worry for Chelsea, though, is the fact that there could be a little unrest in the ranks as the rumors of Sarri leaving at the end of the season to take over Juventus have become stronger and stronger, to the point where Azpilicueta even was asked about it. Of course, he said the team was focused, and given that it seems like Sarri has a distant relationship with the players anyways, it could be a non-issue, but the optics of it aren't great. Given everything that has happened with Baku being the host and how Arsenal fans of Armenian descent are being denied visas to travel to support their club in Azerbaijan, let alone the fact that Arsenal player Henrik Mkhitaryan won't be taking part due to his safety in Azerbaijan not being guaranteed for political and past cultural reasons, and add to the fact that Arsenal must win if they want Champions League football for next season, whether that's good or bad pressure for them, I don't know, I feel like... Arsenal will have a bit of a chip on their shoulder, as their players have mentioned that they want to win this final for Mkhitaryan, and when you couple that with Unai Emery's now storied ability to be successful in this competition, I think that gives Arsenal a slight advantage here. The biggest thing that causes me to pause is that this is likely to be Eden Hazard's final match for Chelsea, a club that he loves, and he will be leaving everything he has on the pitch in order to try to secure the trophy. And a motivated Eden Hazard in full flight can be a terrifying, unstoppable force, one of the best players in the world when he's in the mood. But conversely, Aubameyang and Lacazette are emerging as one of the better strike partnerships in England, maybe in the Europa League as well, having scored eight goals in their last three matches for Arsenal in this competition. Plus, you add to the fact that Sadi has never won a trophy in his career, and Emery has won his last three finals appearances in the Europa League, that counts for something. That counts for a lot, actually. So I feel like this one is going to go to extra time. I get that vibe, in which Arsenal will just edge it. As for a score, 2-1, 3-2, I'll go with 4-3 here, which is a hopeful prediction in that I just want to be entertained, man. I don't care who wins, as long as I'm entertained. But then again, I wouldn't be surprised at all if it went to a shootout, considering how close these teams were during the regular season. One win each in their two meetings. So, who do you think will take it? I'll be doing a watch along for this final, so feel free to join me 10 minutes before kickoff, right here on the channel. But other than that, Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the match. I'm Adrian. Love ya. Take care.